What's happening? This is the Tap In Podcast. We are live inside the Tap In studio for another one. We back for another one. I got a special guest in the building. Man, one of the funniest dudes out of Texas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, Mr. Sir. Piper, the comedian. What's yes, happening? sir. Yes, sir. What's up, brother? Happy to be here, man. A yes, part sir. of this Tap In Podcast, man. This is very nice and dope, man. I really like how you got so Appreciate it, man. Look like you know what you're doing. I mean, a little bit, you know, like you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. A lot, you should have seen when I started. You oh. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm good. I want to see the finished product. <laughs> finished product, buddy. How you been, man? man? I've been booked and busy, man. I've been great, man. That's good, man. Life I gotta, is good. I gotta start this off by saying I, I gotta got apologize to you about something, man. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got you in. I don't know if in a little trouble. I'm ready to know. You already know. I already know. No trouble, just a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. Talking about Derek, right? Yeah. I already know. I knew it. I was gonna call you that day when you you left me at the we was at the tire place at the yeah. Firestone. And, yeah. uh, Derek blew my phone up. Man, how you? I said, hold up, man. I didn't know, man. I didn't know. So I say, but it is what it okay, is. Okay, let me tell you what happened off from my end. Right. After you told me that Derek had COVID, I was like. Let me call. And, and check on it. Yeah, let me just call right. and check on my boy. Right. I was like, yo, hey, man, I just want to call, make sure you good. I heard exactly. you had COVID. You right. you know what I mean? A lot of people was checking out. So, you know what I'm saying? I was just checking on my boy. Right. He like, man, who the f- who told you? Yeah. I- <laughs> and I was, I'm, I'm assuming as soon as you hung the phone up, he called me. He said, man, how did you hear about this? So I'm like, hey, listen, man. I, I, I met Dante, man. He said, that's, you know, I, aren't y'all cousins or something like no, that? No, just my boy. Yeah, this so my boy. I said, I told him, and, you know, I, I didn't think he was going to call and check on you, but, hey, I'm sorry for checking on you. But he was, like, pissed off. Like, I didn't, it's not a secret. I mean, everybody caught the COVID. I mean, it's not yeah. a big deal. But, yeah, he... He was all right, though. Now, he was good. Yeah. Because I didn't know that it was a secret. Because from, from what I heard, he had told the promoter, don't tell nobody. Then the promoter told Shed. Uh. And Shed called me. And so <laughs> if he just said, don't say nothing, I mean, but I didn't know. But now nah, it was all good, though. He I was like. He laughed it off. Yeah, because I was like, man. I was like, I know Piper thinking, like, damn, this nigga can't, can't hold water. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I said. But I said, no, nah, unintentional. Nah, yeah. No, no, yeah, I'm no. Just no. Like, I'm just checking on my boy. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's all, man. And I told Derek, man. Stop it, man. Stop, man. I mean, you can't get mad at somebody trying to check on you. Yeah. I just didn't want nobody to know. Okay, well, we know now. Yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> you get done fussing, you know. But it's all good. Me and D good, man. Yeah, man. Man. Yeah. That was that was a crazy little Yeah, little no moment, need to apologize. No need to apologize. Okay. I straightened okay. it out. I got it right. Okay, good. Because you man. didn't know this is what I didn't know. Yeah. So you <laughs> yeah. had a conversation. We I didn't know COVID was a secret. I mm. thought I thought everybody was catching it. It was like, okay, I got it. You My want people is, to know. He shouldn't have told nobody. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you don't want nobody to know something, don't tell them. Because that's a chance they might tell somebody. So hey, you keep it a secret to yourself. We gotta blame we gotta blame Derek on this. Yeah, man. Come blame, on. yeah matter of fact, let me I'm gonna call Derek, man. I'm gonna call Derek. <laughs> hey, uh Pierre, on the uh yeah, the fifth one. Yeah. I'm gonna connect, I'm gonna call him on here. Let me um Called Derek ass. Man, that is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. You call him, tell him to, man. <gasps> a secret is not a secret if you tell somebody. That's Stop. right, man. It's not a secret no more. Where is this number? Okay. Call him. He might not answer the phone. You know, he might send, he, you know, send something. Going. Yeah, you never know if he got a, a secret going on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> man. Dante. Derek, what's happening? Hey, what's going on, bro? Chilling. We on the podcast, man. So anything you say can and will be recorded. Oh my God. Oh, I guy. held against you. That's Piper, man. That's oh, Piper the comedian. Oh my God. What's oh, up, God. brother? Yes. I'm in the building. <laughs> Derek Keener. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I don't know what's about to happen, but yeah, we, let's get to it. Hey, we, we all three got something in common. I'll tell you that. We we talked about it, and we blaming you for telling your secret that you had COVID. That's that's what we came nah, to the conclusion. No, that's not. No, 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 That's the conclusion we came to. <laughs> now, yeah, first of all, and then y'all just going to put it on a damn podcast. Huh? That's what we're doing. So, so, that's what so we're doing. this is also my fault. This is also my fault. Okay. Yes. Yeah, 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 I want the audience to, 
to see how niggas do. This is not my fault. I didn't ask you niggas to tell the world. <laughs> there, yeah, yeah, so this is what niggas do. That's what we do. Uh, I mean, it's fine. We, I mean, we've been black for a long time. So, yeah, hey, yeah. You, you have too, D. I don't know if you woke up this morning and it was a whole nother race, but hey, man, it's all good, brother. You know, I've been black for a long time, but now I'm blacker than you, Piper. Not black. And so. <laughs> Wait, he got so, these lights on me. I'm looking a little more light skinned than yeah. you right now. So, uh, this thing you air, look glossy black. Nah. You, you could never look light skinned. You just look glossy I'm, black. I'm a little smooth with it now. I'm not crunchy black. I'm a little smooth with it. So, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, you but, hey, don't say, don't say like can you talk around one and you hear them clippers in the background. I I know. The oh, okay. okay. Go on there, man. Go on there. No, listen, hey, but y- y'all ain't in there lying on me, are you? No, no, we no, just no. we just saying if you didn't want nobody to know your secret, then you shouldn't have told nobody your secret. Right. No, hey bro, I had to t- hey bro, this was the the perfect deal of you tell one person. They'll tell everybody. Dante, Dante, like, hey man, you all right? What? Right. Didn't know it was a secret. Didn't know it was a secret. I didn't know. I'm just checking on my boy. You know what I mean? We sorry for checking on you. My bad for making sure you all right. You know, niggas will do it every time. All right, right, man. All right, right. boy. (laughs) Ladies and king, ladies and gentlemen, Derek Keener. Derek King. That's one of my boys, man. Yeah, we funny were... brother, man. Real funny comedian. Yeah, Texarkana, but he, you know, he traveled, man. Real yeah. funny guy. Good yeah. guy, too, man. Yeah, real. real... Derek it was the <sighs> second person to boo me uh, when I started doing comedy. A comedian booed you, man. That's, that's I don't not think, I don't think, you know, listen. We just don't do that. We leave that to the audience. Yeah. You don't boo your fellow comedian. Listen, no. Derek, my first time ever doing stand up comedy. I was at Prairie View Homecoming. I did it in front of the whole student body, and I think Earthquake was on that show. Um, what was the girl name? Dang, I think Dominique was on that show, and one other person. I think Don DC Curry. I was on wow, that show. That's a big show, man. My was... first that was that that was Prairie View Homecoming wow. comedy show. Wow. My first time they was I begged the student um, activities. I said, man, I want to do comedy. Can I at least get five minutes? They was like, we'll give you three. I was like, that's all I need. Derek wasn't on the show? No, Derek wasn't on the show. He was in the audience. And so my first time doing it, of course I got booed. That was in front of the booed. whole. Booed. You know, booed is, is bad. No, yes. I do know. I know now. Bad. It ain't as bad as not saying nothing. But listen, I would kind of rather a boo than just silence. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> like, should I? Kill myself today. Listen, they the whole student. It was only one dude who started the boo in the back of the crowd, right? He started the, you know, one person, especially kids. You hear boo, boo. and then everybody was like ah, boo, and then everybody joined in, right? It was just progressive. Boo. Yes, like, progressive boos. Gaining traction. <laughs> yes, like tornado. And then after the show, the reason why I say he's the second person, because on my way to the car, the comedy show was over. Derek was booing me in the parking lot to the so car. So the show over, and he's still booing. He just kept the boo going. That is terrible. Derek, you wrong, man. That is wrong. And that's how me and Derek got cool. Oh, my God. You was cool with him after that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, no, bro. You, ain't no way. Ain't no, the show over, you still booing? You know, it's a chance other people can hear you. They ain't going to stop. Boy. You want to, I'm already feeling bad. Listen. <laughs> At that point, I was like, I could at least run to the car. I ain't got to hear it. Oh, man. I, thank you, Jesus. Knock on wood. I've never been booed, but I can only imagine, man, <laughs> feeling when somebody what's, what's, you, what's the worst show you had that you can remember? The worst show I ever had? Yeah. Oh, man. I, it's been years, man. I've been doing this for a long time. And you, I think listen, I was, Piper, you are funny as like, like no, no I, doubt about it. I appreciate it. But that, I man. think every comic has had a bad show. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've, to be honest, I never had a bad comedy show. Okay. I've had a bad show, like, being the entertainment. Oh, okay. And I think That's I was a, in Houston, and I was doing almost like, like a fa- show. Yeah, it was like a fashion show slash, um, they had somebody rapping, and they just mixed this stuff, and it was more like a, you know, a variety show. You yeah. <laughs> and I went up, man, and it was like, they wasn't trying to hear nothing I was saying. And, it, and to me, a good show is a good crowd. Mm. And that makes a good show. Yeah. And when your crowd is bad and you <laughs> can identify, yeah. then that makes the show bad. Yeah. So in this particular uh, event, 
um, when I finally went up, it was like they were just looking at me. It was loud. They were talking. And and I don't think it was just, you know, the jokes wasn't bad. It just they wasn't receptive. They wasn't listening. So that makes the show bad. Mm-hmm. So to say I've had bad shows, I can honestly say no because I've, I've, I've tried to avoid those type of events. Mm. And I also avoid clubs doing comedy versus comedy clubs. Uh, Follow okay. what I'm saying? So yeah, I try yeah. to, you know, I try to be a little bougie when it comes to and, I, and selective on the shows that I, you know, that so I you get booked than, for. You better so. than me because I was going in any little hole in the wall. At, in the beginning, of course you know we all do that. <laughs> comedy, if you turn it down, you know, shows, but now and I'm more established that I can say, hey, no, I'm not interested. Oh, yeah, now oh, no. you. Of course, yeah. but yeah, everybody starts off in a little whatever. But now that you have, you know, you can actually, you know, um, you in control of the thing that you want to do and things you don't want to do. If I don't want to do it, I don't, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good because every show is not a comedy show and you can't put comedy anywhere. Right. People don't understand it, that. And, and it's, it's a lot that goes into setting up a comedy show. It's the, it's the way it's set up, the stage, the lighting, the sound. All these things have to be taken, you know, in consideration when you're putting a show together. Mm-hmm. A guy put a show together in, these, in a daiquiri bar and these hookah lounges and all these different. And nothing against, you know, you make your mind, I get it. But when you want to put on a full-fledged show, something that's going to be very nice and productive and you want the show to look nice, you got to put it, you got to have it in the right spot, man. I think people don't understand, like, when people <clears throat> are telling stories and jokes, you need people to be paying attention. Yes. It can't be no distractions. You can't have a bar. And in the middle, on, you know what I mean? People running, the, you know, the stage has to be set up right in the dimensions. Yeah. And all of that plays a part. So, you know, you're putting shows in libraries. They're putting shows <laughs> in coffee shops. <laughs> Seriously. And I just did a show, man. I was in uh, Ocala, Florida. This past weekend. Ocala? Ocala. Okay. O-C-A-L-A. Okay. I had to fly into Orlando, and it's an hour. It's, I think it's like an hour away from Orlando, hour and a half, in between Gainesville. You know, a little small town. I had heard of it because I was, you know, I, I used to live in Florida. Okay. But anyway, we did a show at the um, Howard Johnson Hotel. Hotel, okay. Howard Johnson. And, they, you know, I was joking about it because I said, I know a housekeeping break room when I see one. And that's where we was at. And they had the little petition going. And it wasn't a stage. It was a floor. And they had chairs set up. And, you know, and I'm like, this is not where I, you know, I, I always start my joke off, especially if I'm in a place that I'm not unfamiliar with. It's not, you know, Conducive the perfect. To comedy. Yeah, yeah, I start off like, okay, my manager asked me, did I want to be in Miami? I said, no. Put me in Ocala in the lunchroom with some... Housekeepers and some stuff on the floor, and they had like a little banner up and a DJ with one speaker. I mean, I don't want to be nowhere else but right here at the Howard Johnson, HJ. They don't have a website at this damn hotel. It's like on the website, say go to the hotel and book your damn room. You can't book no room on the website here. I mean, that's how bad it was. But actually, I had fun. It was a good crowd. Yeah. They made a good show. So, but when you do shows like that, man, it just keep you, you know, humble and it actually shows that. You have the dedication to keep doing this, you know, mm-hmm. and it, and it it just brings to the forefront that hey man, every show is not going to be in the stadium or auditorium. Again, I took the show because I knew the person that that, that actually. But if I didn't know them, I'm good. Yeah, I'm not flying way to Florida <laughs> to be no <laughs> HJ Howard Johnson. Yeah. I think I think <laughs> the reason why people do that for comedy shows is because it's the cheapest form of entertainment. You know yes. what I mean? To try yes. to book a DJ is so much like logistics that go into DJ. Yes. To book like a, somebody performing is yes. it's a lot. Yeah, comedy, comedy, just microphone, yeah. DJ sound. And That's people, it. and people would just be like, "Hey, just throw them up in here. We can put them in this closet." Exactly. And I'm like, "What are we? Why am I doing this? I'm like, where is my career going? Why am I taking these shows?" But it was a good show, man. It was, it was pretty cool. I, when I when did you start? When did you start doing comedy? I started comedy, man. You want? Did you see that that um, interview I did with Kevin Hart? And On, I told um, him it was. Uh, I think I sent you the link. The tour of the city. Heart of the city. Heart of the city. That's good. Yeah. yeah, heart yeah. of the city. So I explained to him, man, and, and I'll tell everybody the story that I had. <clears throat> this story about me starting comedy. And it's unusual because most people start off doing open mics or just, you know, um, talent shows. Homecomings. Home, right, homecomings. <laughs> when they first time, they, <laughs> thinking about killing themselves. But um, <laughs> that's not my experience. I was stationed. I was in the military, in the Navy, for eight years. Mm. Shout out to all my veterans. And um, I was in, 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 in Pensacola, Florida. 
That's where I was stationed at. And at that time, this is 1995, I'm going to say, and Bernie Mac was getting hot. He had some of that Def Jam and all that was mm. going on, and he had did I Ain't Scared of You tour. And yeah. he was coming to the city. Mm. Now, mind you, I've always been a fan of comedy. Grew up listening to Richard Pryor and the Bill Cobbs and the Red Foxes, you know, because back then you listened to albums and, you know, you every, you know things wasn't visual then. It was you listening and you your mom and they having a party and you, you got your ear to the door. But anyway, yeah. so I always grew up, you know, uh, admiring, you know, comedy and always was a fan, just loved to laugh. So, um, me, at the time, I was married on um, Max's wife now, but at that time, we had bought tickets to go see Bernie Mac. And <clears throat> the show was like on a Saturday. So I ended up going out that Friday night just to go hang out. It's crazy, man. I ended up meeting the promoter of the show. I'm mm. outside hanging around. You know, back then, hanging on your car, how you lit drink. I'm just out there hanging out, outside hanging out. And he was putting flyers on the windshield. And that, you know, feet on the ground back then. Mm. Ain't no internet, none of that. You put the flyer in people's hands, put on their windshield, see them when they come out of the club or whatever. And me and him just got to talking. We just got to chopping it up, and I had him laughing. Mm. So something in my head just told me to ask him, hey, man, um, who um, who opened it up for Bernie? Because I know he's going to be in town tomorrow. He said, I ain't got nobody open. It's just going to be him and then, I guess, the radio host, whatever. So here I am. Hey, man, uh. Would you mind if I open? I, you know, give me 10 minutes, whatever. Now, mind you, I have no comedy experience, no stage, no, I have never been on the stage telling jokes. It's got to be God, man. It's, it's a fate. It had, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So he said, okay, I'm going to call you tomorrow. Gave my number, wrote my number down. No, ain't no pages. Yeah, I mean, yeah. ain't none of that. Yeah. So gave my number. The next day, I never did at the time. I didn't tell my wife nothing. I didn't tell her nothing what had happened. Until the next morning. I said, I'm going to tell you what happened to me last night. I met the guy that's promoting this Bernie show. And she was like, no, you lying. I said, you're supposed to call me today, but I don't know. So now I'm getting nervous because I think I stuck my foot in my mouth. <laughs> this guy's going to call me. <laughs> yeah. So, lo and behold, phone ring. I say, hey, what's up? You know, hey, man, uh, this sudden, I forget the guy's name. Um, Cheyenne from mm. New York. Mm. He said, it's Cheyenne Production, man. I, you know, I met you last night. You gave me a number. Hey, man, you still you know, up for it, you know? I say, yeah, hell yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still nervous, like, yeah, I'm, I'm up for it. I know, oh, my God. So he gave me the information. He said, I'm going to come pick you up, and we're going to go pick up Bernie from the airport, and then we leave there and go get something to eat before the show. So I'm like, all right. So he came over to the, the van, and we go uh, pick up Bernie from the airport, and I'm not, I'm nervous now. Now nah, it's getting, I said, I done, I done <laughs> came too far, man. I done jumped all the way out here now, so yeah. I might I got to sink or swim. So, man, he, um. Uh, Pick up Bernie, man, and then Bernie, you know, he getting the call looking at me and looking at the proposal, like, asking, like, who is this motherfucker? You know, like, <laughs> Bernie, like, who this motherfucker is? You know, so I'm like, damn, man. I say, damn, but shit, my name is Piper, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. And he talking to the promoter, man. You tell me how motherfucker on the show. I was going to be on the motherfucker. But anyway, talking shit, <laughs> he man. Really talking That's like how that. you talking to me. I'm going to tell you right now. You better do your only motherfucking joke. <laughs> Don't be stealing my shit. <laughs> So he softened it up a little bit, so I, I feel a little more comfortable around him. So, but real cool guy, man, real cool. So we go eat, and mind you, I can't eat nothing. I'm nervous. I'm just sitting there, man, looking at him, and man, he had his little you know crew with him, and had his manager and then promote. We all sit at the table eating. So got finished up with well, with dinner. So took him back to the hotel, and I go back home. Now I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna wear. So mind you, I had bought two tickets. So now I didn't got cocky. I said, I told him, well, I said, look. The extra ticket for me, I don't need it because I'm going to be on the show. She, I can't believe it. So I said, give a ticket to your girlfriend and y'all can come, whatever. So she did not, at the time, she was doing hair, so she told everybody, and, oh, my husband's going to be on the show. He's going to be on the show. That, that, all this, whatever. Okay. Man, I drive up to the venue, right? I guess about an hour before the show. Mm -hmm. I drive up to the venue, man, I'm looking. The line is around the corner, bro. We at the Bayfront Auditorium. I know it had to be at least 4,000 people, man. This sucker was jam packed. Now I'm like, <laughs> I got to really go out here and deliver. I done stuck my foot, and now I'm like, okay, I, I I gotta go through with it. So I go and they let me in security, whatever. I go in my green room, whatever. Have my name in. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm like, wow, this. I said, what I'm gonna do? Yeah. I don't even know what I'm gonna say. He got you a green room. He, everything. <laughs> he ain't paying me nothing. He yeah, already yeah. said at least he can give me a green room. So I get in the green room, man. So the lady who's hosting the show. Was the uh, radio personality off the you know the radio? Mm -hmm. So she came in and had a little had a notepad and was asking me. So you know what you been on? 
I say, uh, <laughs> uh, horse. Uh, I've been on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you mean. What I've been, and I don't know the lingo. She yeah, want to know yeah. my credits, like, yeah, so yeah. I can bring you out. I need to know what you've done or whatever. So I said, oh, I'll just say, um, you know, I'm coming. Just, just, just call my name. That's all I can tell you. Just a guy, new guy coming to the city. Call me. I'm from Louisiana, or whatever. So I'm still, I'm green. All this stuff. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. All of you know the ins and outs about this man. Look, man. So she came back there, she wrote my name down, and it was just me and him. Now, mind you, Bernie hadn't got there yet. Mm. So they come now, all right, five minutes. I'm like, oh, Lord, what am I? And the jokes just start coming in my head. They just start coming. I didn't even know what I was going to say. Mm. I was just going to just go out there and wing it. Mm-hmm. This is my first time on stage, brother. Yeah. Almost similar to your situation. So they called me up, man, had the spotlight on. So I almost freeze up. So now I just I just started talking. Mm. Almost like you hold that water hole and you let it go and yeah. then it just start coming out. <laughs> yeah. Man, first joke I said, well, first thing I said was, hey, y'all, thank y'all for coming out. Y'all give it up for Cheyenne Production for bringing Bernie back to this little small ass town. You know, because Pensacola, that's where Pensacola's small town. Yeah. So they clapping, we're clapping. I said, don't be acting all bougie because they really want clapping. You know, y'all don't get black entertainment down here. You know, the, Last person y'all had down here was black was Charlie Pride. So when I said that, <laughs> it opened up everything. I and everything went from uh, hey man, I did like ten minutes and I was just like talking about stealing food off the buffet. I was talking about getting whippings as a kid, and really? it just everything just formatted. Standing ovation. So one lady was trying to was trying to uh, heckle me. Mm. So I got kind of stuck. I'm just trying to figure it out now. How I was you know I was rambling. Yeah. So she said, hey, and I couldn't see her because the spotlight was in. She said, hey, your ass ain't funny. Get your ass off the stage. So everybody kind of looked back at her. I said, you shut your ass up. You know the only reason why you're here because it's close to the first of the month. So when I said that, everybody, ooh, your food stamp having ass. I didn't, again, I couldn't see her. I yeah. said, you're probably so fat you got a VCR for a beeper. When I said that, then everybody just, and I just went off the stage. They, ooh, ooh, ooh. Now I think I'm a comedian. Yeah. Now I think I'm funny. You are. You, you now are. I think I'm real funny, right? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so this guy called himself to be my manager. I done did one show. <laughs> one, not even Cheyenne? 10 minutes. No, no, it was a guy oh, was that another. lived in the city. Oh, uh, okay. Cheyenne okay. was just a promoter. He was just doing shows all over. Okay. And he was smart because what he was doing was taking Bernard to these smaller cities, mm. markets, and he was selling them out versus, you yeah. know, trying to go to Chicago, New York, all the different places. So yeah. he was smart. So this guy come up to me and man, you were funny, man. I want to manage you. Give me a number. Da, da. I'm like, okay, yeah, you manage me. I what the hell am I manage? How in the hell I manage to even meet this clown? But anyway, so he called me and said, man, I'm going to set up a show at this local club. I said, all right, cool. So I done told all my friends, like all my church members, y'all come out to the show. Y'all come out. Man, I went out there, man. Them people, were, it was packed too. They said, that's a guy from Bernie Mac. So I'm living off this. I'm I'm still riding this wave like I'm somebody. Yeah, man, I go in that club, man. I bomb so bad. Al Qaeda was looking for me. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about I was terrible. <laughs> suspicious I, package. <laughs> but suspicious package, not a bomb, but a suspicious powdery substance. I'm talking about gunpowder smelling firecracker. Man, it was terrible, man. And I had got to the point I was like, I gotta really, you know, because comedy is is something that you really, it's a craft. Yes. You know, punchline, stage presence. You yes. Know, um, you know, um, facial expression, sound, you know, inflection um, and voice. all of that yeah. movement and just you got to have it. And that come with time on the stage that yeah. come with, you know, you have to you have to um, put yourself in position to like, OK, I'm going to be on the stage, to, you know, tomorrow I'm going to do the open mics. I'm going to start really getting mm. out there and you can't, you know, pr- it's nothing can teach you other than experience. You have to have that experience. Nobody can tell you how to do it. Nobody can show you got to go out there and do it. And that and and that come in time. And a lot of these younger comedians, what I've noticed, they see the older comedian or the all the all the comedians that've been doing it for a while. Seasons. And now they thinking they've been doing comedy six months, they got a special. Yeah. You know, and and you can see the 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 immaturity on the stage. You can see that that green, like, bro, you you just need to work it out. It's nothing against the young comedy. It's a lot of young comedy that's very good. They just trying to move too fast. You know, you can't skip the process or you can't skip the line. Yeah. Microwave society, what I call it. They want it right now. They don't want it because it takes a while to get to where you need to be funny. Oh, my God. You, it, I ain't always been this funny. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. takes a while, bro. And here, 
here, here's the I always I have an argument with um one of my homeboys, LeVar Walker, right? He a, he a comic. Yeah, I know. I, I never met him, but I know. I know yeah, exactly. Me and him about. always have this conversation. When I talk, when I tell him about when we be arguing about the craft versus popping, right? Because I'm like, some of these, some of these guys are popping like on 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 social media. Yes. They're selling out shows. Yes. But I'm like, do they have any jokes? And he his thing is, they don't need no jokes. They got an audience already. And I'm like, no. Well, you well, to me, I think you're cheating your audience when you don't deliver the jokes. Cause when you see these uh, internet, what I call internet comedians, but we see these um, comedians doing skits, and you gather and, and you have accumulated all these people that that, that tap tap in and like your you know videos, and like you said, they have a big audience, so now they got these big following, mm-hmm. and now I'm gonna be at this certain comedy club or this wherever. Now these fans are coming, and they are looking for that 35, 45 minutes of jokes, boom, 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 and then like you said, you can't deliver. Yeah. So. I disagree with all oh, these audience. Yeah, but you want to please your audience. You know, you want to, you want to make sure they get what they came for. Because what you said make a lot of sense. You want to be out and be funny. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's that's the premise of it. We all got something in common. We funny, man. You can't. It's 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 hard to transition from the skits to the stage because a lot of them start off, man. Oh my God, they start off terrible. Yeah. But this transition, you have to stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay yeah. on that stage, man, and keep that experience going. Because if you try to, okay, I got a 10-minute skit, a 5-minute skit. Now I'm getting hired to do 30 minutes of jokes. Yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. Because me and him was arguing about, um, I was like, yeah, these people are probably selling out clubs. You know and what I mean? And they are. They probably selling out clubs, but... How do you go? How do you like grow that? How you go from clubs to arenas or or auditoriums? You know what I mean? How do you grow that without without the jokes? Because I feel like people will come pay you see, pay to see you one time. It's, it's, if you don't have the jokes and if you're not entertained, that's temporary. They not it's gonna not come gonna, back. Not you you can coming. get them once. You got to keep them coming, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And that's what I told him. But he was like one of, one of the guys. I don't want to mention his name. What, fuck it, Desi Banks. Right. He was I was like, yeah, Desi Banks is funny, but do we got jokes? And I was like, how are you gonna get from the comedy club to like a, a auditorium or like something bigger? He was like, nigga, he already doing that. I was like, what? And I had yeah. to go look. Yeah. And he is doing a tour in yes. auditoriums. I'm just like yes. okay. Yeah, he got a he got a he got a he got a big audience. Yeah, and I was just like, he okay, busy. I didn't. Did. He booked him busy for real. The brother doing his yes, thing, so. and I was I was surprised because I'm like, oh dang, I didn't know that he was in auditoriums. Oh, you know yes. what I'm saying? Auditorium theaters, he doing his thing. I just I'm just like for the audience, I just want to make sure. Like, I mean, it ain't my job to make sure, but <laughs> right. But I just be like, I want to like for I want to see comics win. You know what I mean? Yes. And so yes. the only way you win is you had to. Stay on stage. You have to come with new jokes because when you come back to that city or you come back around next year, they're not gonna want to hear the same jokes or they not want they not gonna be putting up with you trying to do skits on stage. You know what I'm saying? Well, they, I don't. I don't. They've already don't, seen this online. Absolutely. I I I feel like <clears throat> what you said make a lot of sense. You know, they wanna they wanna um, stay relevant mm-hmm. and keep you know and keep up with the time and be relatable jokes and come up with new material and. That comes with, you know, being a comic. Mm-hmm. And when a lot of these, you know, comedians, internet comedians, you call them, the transition is hard. But a lot of them transition very well. And my boy Bubba Dub transitioned very well. He's been doing comedy for a while. And mm. people just think he just do skits, but the boy's a monster on stage. Mm. But that came with time. It came with him, you know, grinding. Yeah. And he got him a team and, 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 and the brother doing his thing, bro. Shout out to my boy Bubba Dub, man. The brother is good. Young bro. Trash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> but yeah, man, man. So yeah, man. I'm actually on tour with him. And uh, you know, okay. you know, um, he gave me a couple of dates here and there in Richmond, Virginia. I'm doing Houston. I've done the improv here in Arlington, Addison, Tampa Improv. Okay. And so yeah, he got me he got me working on that. That's bit. what's so, up, man. Yeah, good That's guy. That's what's bro. up. Yeah, I I just I I'm, I know it's not comics job to police the the comedy business you know what i mean right but it is something like it's like a fraternity you know yes, what I mean? exactly that's what i always say we are fraternity and yeah. there's certain things that i i wouldn't say 
comments um, via social media or public. If I got an issue with Dante or if I feel like, hey, man, you should, I'm going to come to you personally, call you, text you, whatever. Yeah. I, don't, I don't believe in, you know, just putting the business out there. Let's say you did a special mm-hmm. and then I, I don't think it's funny or it's trash. There's no way in the hell I'm going to go on Facebook, Instagram and say, man, Dante, man, that special was trash. That special was <laughs> Why would I do that to you? Why? But you got comedians that do that and, and give their input on certain comedians that do specials, Netflix or whatever, and have to, you know, and say, well, I don't think it was. No, you want to be in a position he's in. Yeah. He or she is in. So why would you go and bash him if it wasn't? It's like this. Comedy is, 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 is subjective. Mm-hmm. So people like what they like. Yeah. Yeah. I might not like it. And I always use this analogy. I don't like liver. I hate liver. But they're still selling it. <laughs> exactly, you know what I mean? Exactly. They're still selling it. So people like what they like. Exactly. So if this person is in a position you want to be in, and you feel like that person didn't deliver, that person special was I, it, was, it, it ain't my place to even critique it. Uh, hey, you want to be where he at. Yeah. Yeah. So whether you liked it or not, somebody liked it. Somebody enough like people it. like it for him to get you know yeah so and somebody paid I'm, him for it there you, you know go I, mean? I always I always stuck to that rule of never bash a comic publicly or never say negative things about your fraternity brother your or your you know your mm-hmm. um, your sister in the game because we all everybody ain't gonna like Piper everybody ain't gonna like Dante so it's just what it is that come with it and it almost looked like hating but hey yeah. it is what it is let me ask you this. This may be a little controversial, and you can say I don't want to answer. What do you think about Charleston? Is he in the fraternity, Charleston? Well, not yet. Okay. Not yet. I mean, he's knocking at the door, and he's, you know, he doing what he do, man. I just don't feel like <clears throat> everybody can just come in this arena. Everybody can just come in this comedy thing and think it's, okay, I'm funny, and now I'm just going to be a comedian. Yeah. I didn't change out one battery, and now I'm a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. These are things that you have to do. To call yourself a comedian. Yeah. Nothing against the brother. He doing what he do. Uh, and even what what we say, oh, what's your boy name? T.I., he didn't, he didn't veer it off into the comedy. Kind of, That's fine. But yeah. you're not going to be as great and as fun as you think you are because you are funny. You, it's going to take some time to be a comedian. You got to put these things together. And I think that'd be fine, but it's going to take some time. And here's what I'll say. I, and I've said this privately, so I want to say it publicly, too. I think Charleston, if he would have stayed around T.K., he probably wouldn't have got no as much money as he's probably getting at doing his own shows. But I think TK may have been able to school him on some right. comedy rules exactly. or comedy etiquette. Yeah, you know what, what I mean? to do and what not to do. Yeah. You I, know, don't step I, on the toes, who to talk to. But I didn't know much about that situation. I know they was on the, the tour with Live Nation or whoever. Yeah. Inside. I thought it was a good look for both of them, but. Apparently it didn't work. I don't really know know what happened. I, I and I, I think Charleston jumped out there too quick because I think he was so used to doing his own shows. He had his followers. He got his own making thing his own going. money exactly. But yeah. I think it's it's certain amount of time hours that you have to put in to really understand the game. And I think and I honestly I said this to one of my homeboys. I said if Charleston could have stayed around him for a year and just get learn. to know him too. Get to know what you you know and just what you get learn, yourself into. Yeah, well, how to tell jokes. You know what I mean? It ain't just going out there just telling long stories. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How you to get, tell jokes? How to put set a, up a punch punchline in every nine days? Yeah. If how to do how to to structure a joke? If if he Charleston could have learned that from TK. Charleston could have been out of here. Charleston would have surpassed TK mm. because he already got the audience. And most of the time for comedians, that's the hardest thing to do. Yes, because you can be funny. Audience. Yeah. You can be funny. But a lot I of these promoters. a bunch of funny comedians. But it's about the money. Yes. You can't put the asses in the seats. That's what I'm saying. You can be funny. Yeah. But who won't come see you? <laughs> exactly. I mean, and me being in the game so long, it took me a while to realize that. You're like, man, that guy, he all right. He ain't the how he, he putting the asses in the seats, whether people you like see him, him, if you think he's funny or not. Yeah, people so. want to see him. But, I mean, people are still going out to see Charleston, so. Yeah, he still got his audience. Yeah, and I think I just think it's going to take him longer to really find his, like, the comedy side of it, the craft of it. You know what I yes. mean? It's going to just take him a little longer because he's going to have to bump his head on certain things and learn from that if he continues doing it. But I think it's just going to take him a little longer to get to the point where He's like a, solidified. Okay, yeah, boom, this guy gonna deliver. He gonna yeah. come out and give us a thirty yep. quarter minute show. So you right there in that coming time. Yeah, yeah, Again, man. You ain't been into that long, so man. yeah. But you made a you know valid point. 
you know, just study this crap. It ain't just something you just jump in. Yeah. Now, let's, let's switch gears a little bit, man, because this is something that's been talking about for the last week, and I want to get your opinion on it. Will and Jada, man. What 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 what, I, what you think about what's going on? I man? really and I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't really know <laughs> what's going on. I'm just hearing little stuff here and there because I don't really know the premise of I mean what's I mean what's being said or she said something about that she don't really know him or he, I really don't know. To be okay, honest. let me let me kind of let me kind of uh, give you a little synopsis of what's happened from what I know. Right, okay. Jada is coming out with a book. It's a memoir of her life or, you know, things that happened in her life. Right. She's saying that, you know, her and Will has been through this, all this stuff. She has stories in there about Tupac, um, stories, just all kind of different stuff about her life. Right. And her thing was she never really wanted to get married to Will in the beginning. You know and what I mean? she put this in the book. She put this in the book. She was like, she was... They really, she's what well, she's from what I heard. These are quotes that I've heard that they had. To, she went down the aisle kicking and screaming because she really didn't want to, right? right? But Will is a good dude. Will, you know what I mean? She, once they had the kids or whatever, she kind of just stuck in there. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so now is it's added on to everybody knows about this entanglement. Everybody knows about how she said that Tupac had asked her to marry her. And it's just a bunch of stuff piling on. And it's looked like she bashed a wheel. And even though she put Will through a bunch of shit, Will is still like, I'm still going to be here regardless. And everybody's like, God damn, Will, are you still? It's, it's, like, any <laughs> other, it's like any other relationship. Mm. They relationship just public and people know who they are. A relationship. It's a little different, though. It's, it's a little it's different. No different. It's, it's, a, it's a married couple. Yes, a married so couple. So it's okay. basically what they're going through is different. I get that. Okay. But it's like any other relationship or marriage. It's like if you was with your wife mm -hmm. and I tell you, hey, man, you need to leave her, man. Oh, she did the same thing. Until you get tired, you're going to stay in that relationship, no matter what nobody else say. And now we as you know, as fans or whatever of the marriage or, or Will or Jada whoever – if he's still there, that's where you want to be. And it don't I, to me and you to the to the naked eye looking at it like, bro, how crazy can you be? Why would you put yourself through that? But in his mind, he feel like you're doing the right thing. You don't have to agree with it. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't go through nothing like that, and you wouldn't either, and this brother probably wouldn't either. But at the same time, this dude is 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 he's not at his end because when you're done with somebody, you're done. But he said he's never. They, she wrote in the book too that they've been separated since 2016, but they are never getting divorced. That's, whether that's, whether they live together or not, that's never. a bad bond, bro. I'm sorry, <laughs> I would never say I'm never going. Cause you don't know things happen. I mean, I, I, all I can say, is, man, I'm a married man. I just hope that they work it out some kind of way. Cause the public is in your business, and I fought Jada for putting everybody and you putting this in a book, and it just makes him look bad. You just shouldn't have did that to him, and that's why everybody's like, "Well, why are you doing that to him? He just, he don't deserve that." I mean, it's again, he's there, man. It's I don't. It's, I'm, I'm conflicted to be honest with you, cause I, I'm conflicted with the the audience or the the fans' right outrage, right? Because on one hand, you got Will Smith, where he's saying. You know what? I'm gonna just be here what throughout whatever happened. And then on the other hand, you got Tyrese, where this nigga was begging for his wife to be back that with two him. Different people, man. <laughs> two different people, man. Everybody can't handle love. You know, love like, is the strongest emotion in the world. Is it? Love is the strongest emotion. <laughs> you got people killing themselves, man. Men and women. You don't be with me no more. Okay. Wow. You jumping off of bridges. I would never do, but you got some people that just can can take more than others. That's, that's the way of the world. Tyrese probably wanted he he wanted his marriage. He, but it, he married the wrong person. Yeah, man. And it's hard. Marriage is not easy because it was easy. Everybody. Would I mean, you want that strength that Will Will Smith got? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would want that. strength. No, I would want that strength if my woman was treating me right. You know what I mean? But I don't. That's no. That ain't strength. That's crazy. Oh, no, bro, I can't. No, I don't want that type of endurance. I'm, I'm, I'm breakable. You can break me. You can put that shit out. I'm gone. I'm out. No, hell no. I don't want that.
I mean, there's no way we can it's, we can't <laughs> reconcile from you can't some certain things you can't come back from. Yeah. And I use this analogy. A vehicle. You wreck your car, right? Mm-hmm. Boom, you hit a, a pole or something, hit another car. Sometimes they can fix that car. Mm-hmm. And sometimes what? It's total. It's total. Yeah. So sometimes relationships are total. There's it is you can't repair it. It can't be salvaged. You've done so much damage to this vehicle. I can't fix it. Relationship. You'd have done so much. I can't fix it. And I think that's where they should be with her, you know, doing all the shit she's doing. It's, it's so much. Yeah. But apparently he thinks it's fixable. He, I, I can fix it. But here's, here, I'm going to just, for the sake of argument, right? When people say they don't want to get married, it's be, and they always go back to the divorce rate. They said, "Yeah, statistically, the, the numbers are against you." The just, yeah, yeah. But when somebody say, "You know what? I'm gonna stay here no matter what. I'm not getting the divorce. I don't care what happens." Now why that, why are a, we that, not that, applauding that? That's a fool. That, that's <laughs> why, a damn fool. Why are we not guess what? That? I deserve happiness. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be by myself happy than with somebody miserable. If that makes sense to you. It makes sense. And I get what you're saying. The numbers are against you when you get married. Going to, I mean, statistically, what, 60? I don't, I don't 70% know. 70% divorce I don't know rate? Either. Yeah, you, it, it just. It, but I don't I'm know, man. I, like, I can't do it, bro. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm ride or die. <laughs> I'm ride or die. How about you? you married, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's certain things that your wife can't do that you saying, I, I, I just, I ain't going to be able to do it. It's certain things you can't do. Your wife can only tolerate so much. And I know I didn't tolerate it a lot. You probably tolerate it a lot. Yeah. And what break you might not break me, and vice versa. So in this case, we're looking at him like, bro, you should have been broke. So is it is the is the breaking is it breaking our ego, or is it breaking that emotion? What, All what of are, the above, because I feel like I deserve better than this. Why are you treating me like this? What have I done to make you? And I don't believe in a tit for tat. Okay, you cheat on me, I'm cheat on. We don't need to be together if we're doing that. Yeah. What are we? What are we doing? Marriage is, a, is a, you know, it's a bond. It's us well, trusting each other. It's us. Living how long our you been life. married? This time I've been married since 21. 21, 21, 21. So going two on two years. Going on three years. How long was your first one? Oh, my first one was off and on 15, 16 years. Okay. Yeah. Man, so, I was young. I was 20, 21. Yeah. Was the first time in love. I didn't, I didn't. This is my second marriage too. My okay. first, my first marriage. I was married ten months. Boy, that was a an omen. Right? Yeah. Married, that was just y'all went yeah. together for a little while. Yeah, was yeah. Bought some rings. My this is my second one that I'm in now. We are uh, five years, though. 2018, yeah, five years. Now, yeah, okay. We've been in five years. Six years, going on for six years. No, yeah. no, no. We just we just had our five year. Oh, gosh, that's 23. I'm thinking 20. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, I know in the marriage. Well, I'm finding out in the marriage. Up and down. It yes. goes up and down. Sometimes yes. you're going to be on highs. Sometimes you're going to be on lows. But is the is the low that low where you like, I'm going to just scratch off all the highs and say, you know what? I don't want to do it no more. I'm tired. I'm, I'm. It depends on how does it does it weigh out. Is the bad outweighs the good? I mean, because you're going to have your lows. I know for me, the bad would be cheating. Right. That, okay. That, I mean, that would that's, be. That's the that's 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 worst a, of the worst when it comes to a relationship. Yeah, that's 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 the worst. That's the that's that's the no no. But on the highs is we've had kids together, we've traveled, we've seen the world. What's we, your standard? What is your standard? What's your out? What's your no no? What's show I I can't do it. See, I don't know because I don't know. I don't. I, I can't say it's one thing. I think for me, it'll have to be. A couple of things, and they can be small things. It could be go she back. Can, to, go it could be small damage, little go things. Back to that, I keep damaging. I keep after a while. I can only take so much. So it can be one thing. So you saying if she come home and say one day I'm I I, I I I slept with Craig and whatever. Oh, listen. That's what I mean. So it can be a one thing. It can be no listen one certain thing. If if I if she I've ever had if I ever have to come across that like. Oh, that's gonna hurt like crazy. Yeah, it's gonna hurt like crazy. Yes, but I can't. I can't sit here today and say that's gonna make me leave. Cause, cause in my mind, I want to be like, I'm gonna put you through hell. And why even? <laughs> so why even stay? I'm gonna put you through hell. Why even stay? I'm gonna say for um, I'm gonna say for me, that would be my. That's it. 
Really? Yes, because I'm giving my all to you. And on the flip side, the woman then giving her all to you, and then you go out and do. I'm not condoning either way. Men are men. It happens yeah. on both sides. I'm saying as an older guy now, seeing it at a, in a different way, if you go out and do that, that took some time. That took y'all was talking, y'all communicating. Because cheating is, is a is a it's a job. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a process. It ain't just all of a sudden. You no, know, it's some things that have to take but place. What, what if it, you got to go out of your way? That what mean if it you, was? What, if, what it, if it was? What if it was just a, like a one time? Hey, like, how would I know that? Because she, she, if you she cheat, you're lying. No, well, I don't know feel, that. She feel good. I want to know what you tell me. If I didn't catch y'all on that, she I go. Wanna... No, she go out with her girls, right? See, they go on vacation together. Exactly. They go on vacation. Everybody's hanging out. Is it, this? It's a girl group. They all get drunk, and then it's another guy group that's on vacation. They all hanging out, hook up, yes. do something. It, it's not like she uh, was cheating emotionally. It was just like a physical thing, and she came back, and she felt horrible the next day. And she like, you know what, Piper? Like, I respect our marriage, but I feel like I don't want to hold this secret from you. I want to tell you, me and this guy did yeah. this. And Thank I you for know. telling me. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate that. <laughs> That doesn't <laughs> negate the fact that I'm still fucked up. <laughs> you done hurt my soul. Yeah. You done gave another motherfucker <laughs> shit no. I'll be hurt, of course. But it's like Would you leave though? Yeah, I got to. I can't I can't live with that knowing that another man was with, with, with my woman and I'm right here back. How I know you ain't gonna do it again. I only know what you tell me. Yeah. I can't I, Would you rather her not tell you then? Uh, yeah. Really? Well, yeah, why would I why you need to know that and then stay? If I'm staying, I don't need to know. I don't need to know. If you that good at it, you done went on your vacation, you didn't mess around, you didn't got hooked up with this guy, whoever. Uh, why would you tell me that? I don't know. And then you're gonna tell me she I feel you guilty. It? She feel guilty. That's fine. You go <laughs> you both feel good. How you respect the marriage and how you see, here's another thing. I don't believe in um home wrecking. People say, you're a home record. You mm. took my girl. You took If you took anything from me, it was never mine. Mm. I can't take nothing from you. That ain't yours. Come on, bro. You can't You can't get mad at the guy. You can't get mad at the woman. You messing with a woman. Now you're like, hey, bitch, and I'm like, hey, why are you mad at her? Mm. Now, if you know her, or if I know him, it's different. It's just respect. If I know you, Dante, come on, bro. Yeah. Come on now. Now, I mean, you got an issue. You can <laughs> have her. I don't want her no more, but me and you going to, because I know you, so I expect certain things from you, certain standards from a friend. Yeah. But if I'm if, if if my wife cheating and I find out who the guy, I'm, I'm going to go kill him. The only way I kill him is if I find him in my house or if I come and catch y'all. That's different or whatever. But I'm not mad at the guy. I got a problem with this lady. Mm. That's why I'm married to her. I ain't married to her. I don't, it's whatever. Yeah. So ain't no you took her and you home wrecking and you doing no it was it was it was doomed from the start because I never had nothing so if this lady go on this vacation she do all then you never was committed to the relationship you can't let yourself just get out there like that then I don't know if you are gonna do it again so why why would I stay and, and and deal with that and deal with that type of pressure on my brain now can I go on another trip. You let her go on another trip now. Nah, you're gonna be nah, looking nah. at it's see, gonna be some, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be some, different. So it's gonna be some time why before put you go. Yourself through that. So if, if you tell me you cheating on me, if, you, if I tell you I cheated, you need to leave me. You're not gonna put me through hell. Really? You no. you want her to you leave? You gotta go. Really? You gotta go because you're not gonna put me through this microscope and everything that I'm doing and you calling my phone and you seeing. A, why go through that? Why put yourself through that? That don't make sense to me. I can't live. I want to live in peace. You deserve the peace, and I do too. So if you're going to be hurt, if bygone be bygone, if we got kids, and we're going to co-parent, we're going to make this thing right. But somebody <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> now we got to live with it. Somebody <laughs> fucked up. So you got to live with it. Whether it's a man or the woman, deal with your consequence. What your, when you was younger, with your mom and dad, you made the bed, you got to lie in it. Yeah. And I believe that, bro. Yeah. Being 52, man, finna be 53 years old, I look at things totally different than when I was 21. And I'm sure you're the same. You, you just can't allow yourself to make the same mistakes. And now, I don't believe in mistakes. I believe in bad choices. What? Think about it. Okay, a, mistake, break that down. a mistake is something that you didn't mean to do. I can slam my hand in the damn car door. I didn't mean to do that. Mm -hmm. But a choice. I had to call her. I had to text her. I had to go to the hotel. Now when I get caught up, I made a mistake. No, I made a bad choice. Choices are what we make. 
Now, when you get caught, it's a mistake. No, sir. <laughs> That's the difference. Uh, a mistake is something you didn't mean to do. You hit that damn toe on that damn bed pole, and now you, uh, that's a mistake. But a choice is something that you choose to do. I don't know if you know my background. I used to work at a federal institution, mm. federal law enforcement. So mm. I worked in, in at a federal prison. I hit for work, just retired. And I used to tell the inmates all the time, you don't make bad, you don't make mistakes. And they say the same thing. Well, what do you mean? I say, you made a choice to go out and do the crime that you did. That was the choice you made. And you was going to keep doing it until you got caught. Mm. So you did it for 10 years? How you make a 10-year mistake? <laughs> I don't get it. How do you make a 10-year mistake? You made them choices. You just kept doing it and kept until you got caught up. And now I was like, oh, man, I made a mistake. My bad. I, no. Suffer the consequence. So we talk about the marriage. We talk about all that. It's a consequence that come with that. We okay, you cheated all right? Yeah. So I guess what I was more speaking of in the context of a mistake in the marriage where it is like a one night thing, not where that's still a choice. You have to choose to take the drinks and be let, uh, uh, and allow yourself to, you know, have your guards down and then he sliver right in. That's still a choice. No, they just what having, I'm having to stop? She's having fun. You she can just, have fun. She's just having fun. You can have she's fun. hanging out. You, you know can keep saying? your legs like, closed and have fun. <laughs> Why you got to have fun in the bedroom? Because that's what the alcohol does. It I takes get it. down you all need to your stop, walls. You need to stop drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you need to stop drinking. We got a bigger all problem. All your walls. Shit, he getting some walls all right. Shit, take down your walls. He taking down your drawers. That's what he doing. <laughs> so if, if alcohol leads you in that direction, you might need to stop drinking. <laughs> that's what I mean. You know your <laughs> wife. You know your husband. You know your, yeah. you know, you know your partner. Yeah. If you know your wife can't drink, you know your husband can't drink, and he do some weird things, she do some weird, then yeah, you you signed up for that. That's just me, man. I mean, I don't know. I just hate to see Will, man. I just hate to see Will going through it. Because I remember at a point, I think I was like in my 20s, when I was like, if Will and Jada don't make it in marriage. But guess what? Guess I, a, I don't think there's no what, hope for nobody. No, nope. You know why we can't do that? You can't say that. We're on the outside. You mm -hmm. only you only can see what you can see. Mm -hmm. Meaning that only believe in what they're telling you. See him on TV. See he doing moves. They're doing well financially. I get it. Their kids are outstanding. And on the outside, it looks so great. Mm -hmm. But you cut that sucker open, man. It's a whole bunch of stuff going on. And that's with any marriage. So why would you think their marriage is so perfect? Tell me, tell me two things you you think why their marriage is so different than any other marriage, other than them being celebrities? Why would you think, think it's so perfect? Or if they don't make it, I mean, why them? I think at that time when I said that is because I thought Will and Jada both are genuine people. They appear to be genuine. Say that word, woman. Appear. Thank you. They appear to be genuine. Because you don't know him and you don't know her. Yeah. At all. Yeah. You know her. You know him from Fresh Prince of Battle Lab movies. That's all you know him from. You don't know nothing personal about him. Yeah, yeah. I don't know nothing personal about Jada. I don't know her movies. She's a great actress, nice looking young lady. It's all I know is what I see. Right. But do I know you? No. Can I call you and say how you you don't know them on a personal level to say you don't know if he even liked to wash his ass. You know, you don't a lot of things you don't know about people, you just see. Cause yeah. they're not gonna let you inside their house and let you know let you get personal with them. So you don't really know them. But yeah. they appear to be a perfect couple. They ain't the only one gonna get divorced. Eventually, he might just get enough and leave. I don't know. I'm not telling nobody to leave and do what they do, but apparently he hasn't had enough. Yeah, he hasn't had enough. And the, oh, his breaking point is a little he can he bending a little it's more than I would. And I, I, I would say this too, on the other on the other flip coin of that, we don't know what Will put Jada through. D and you don't know, you know, what you don't know and but we see what she putting him through. Yeah, yeah. And that's the part of that. Right. Like, if he, if we don't know what when he put you through, why are you telling us what you put and him guess through? What? But guess what? But like you say, that's why we were probably taking it, man. I put her through a lot. So yeah. They looking at me like I'm the victor. Yeah. And she the victim. <laughs> right? Y'all think I'm the victim, man. I didn't yeah. woo. But see, we don't know that. And we yeah. jokingly saying that, but we don't know. Yeah. It looks bad. You're right. I totally agree. That look, what, what she's doing, it looks very bad. But where is it derived? Where is it coming from? I'm just like, I want to. Why would you do that? I want to go back to the to the to the point where celebrities didn't tell us their business, and we kind of had to like 
wonder, like, why what are the mystique. They, but why are they obligated to tell you this? Social media. They, they're still an obligation. I mean, it's not. Yeah, it, it puts it on the forefront. Social media has changed the game tremendously. I think everybody is now. Ain't nothing a secret. <laughs> you know, nothing. You got cameras everywhere. People use cell phones. You got people, you know, recording you. Yeah. You, I mean, it's. Yeah, I want to go back to that point, though. Where, well, where celebrities had a little mystique to them. You was like. Trying to figure out. Yeah. So everything is out now. Yeah, so yeah. nobody can guess. <laughs> yeah, you just put yeah. it out there. Well, damn, I was going to ask you, but. I remember, this, this to bring it to the point, I remember where I was when Tupac died, right? When I heard about it. And I was like, damn, we never going to find out who shot him or who did what. I'm, dang, my whole life, we never going to find out because there was probably no cameras or no nothing. Right. I know everything. I can tell you like I was there. <laughs> what happened now? You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's it's people talking and telling details to that to that point where you could tell it like you was even in the car. Like I was sitting in the passenger seat. He pulled a gun out. Like, and how long has it been? Twenty five, twenty some years. He got in the in, in what year was that? Ninety six. Ninety six. Yep, nineteen ninety six. Technology, man. Like you say, social media. You know, and people talking, and that's how you know. These podcasts, man. All of that. Tap these, in, you know. <laughs> just telling podcasts. it all. Just everybody just telling it. Come you know? tell your story, man. Go, <laughs> if you got a story, come over here and come tell, on, it. tell it. Come tell it. You go, boy, gonna get out there. Yeah. But I, I, it can be a blessing and a curse with this social media, man. I try to use it for the positive. You know, every day I get up and I walk six, seven miles and I put the videos out there. And I, I try to encourage people to get out, get up and do something with yourself. And, you know, as, as you get older, you got to exercise and you got to – you know, you know, take care of yourself. Go to your doctor and go and, and, and make sure you're going to be around because time is the only thing that you can spend and can't get it back. Yep. So what we try to do, man, mm -hmm. what I try to do, push out that, that positive agenda, push that out to people. And that's why I use social media. Oh, I got some shows and I'll try to put it out there. But that social media can be something else, man. Yeah. You know I mean? in, a, in a negative sense, it, it, it's crazy, bro. See, I, don't, I, I feel like social media is still – Telling people what you want them to see, and that's that's why I said blessing and the curse. You know what I'm saying? Tell them, what, the tell, them yeah. tell them what you want to see. But some people, I think, when you get to the point where you start telling too much, you got to keep telling because you got to at the drive. Yeah, and people are sitting here keep like, people engaged. They, they waiting, you know. But if you start it, you got to finish. That's Pandora's it, so. box, man. Yeah, man. I'm I'm just never been in that in that arena of telling everything. I ever blow up. You won't know. I don't think you know if I, you know, is is what I tell you. So yeah. I don't want it to just be out there. So why should celebrities tell their business why? I don't know. And I don't believe in what they say, good good media, bad media think, is all the same. I I mean I think why? for most celebrities, especially like the new ones that are that are coming around. Yes. I think they are more like I wanna say knee jerk. Um, because it's like I know, I know it's somebody. I know it's recorded somewhere. Right. Let me get my story out before. Excuse me. Let me get my story out before somebody else do. Right. Let me, let me, let me, let me put my narrative out exactly. there before somebody else do. And then it was like nobody was even thinking about that. But <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you for telling us. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna, we gonna take a, a break. I need to go to this room. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 We back. Back at it. We back. <clears throat> yes, sir. <clears throat> Man, so Piper, I don't, I don't want to keep you here all day. Yeah, you, you know do. what I mean. Yeah, you do. I don't. I know you do. Yeah. You got a, you got a show tonight at the Improv? No, not tonight. My show was November twenty second at the Arlington Improv. We do it every year, the day before Thanksgiving, that Wednesday. The people in town, everybody off the next day, so we normally sell out. Okay. Third annual. Okay. Who on for the holiday? Who's all on that show with you? Oh, uh, we got my little young young um, young cat in the game, little Wizard. I got my boy Shay G. Um, okay. I don't think who else we got on that show. My boy Eddie Green coming in from uh, West Palm Beach. Um, who else we got? I gotta look at the fly, but we got okay. Out. Yeah, it's gonna and be what, nice. And what man. is it? What is the actual show? It's just it's a, called Home for the Holidays, and we okay. it's, it's, you know it's a comedy show. So I'll be the host, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna bring up my, my, my people and my family probably be in town. And and normally, like, you know, like I say, it, it, you know, normally sell out because it's a great day to do it because everybody in town. Yeah, yeah. And people are off and. 
Yeah, we sell it out, bro. And it's the, you said it's the day before Thanksgiving? That Wednesday, yep. November okay. 22nd. Yep, that Wednesday. So November 22nd. Make sure y'all get, uh, where can they get tickets? Ticket. Uh, you can go to the website. You can go to all into uh, the improv? improv website, yes, and get the ticket. Improv, I think it's Improv Texas or I- Improv. Or TX. you can you can hit me up on my Instagram. Okay. At Piper the Comedian, I can send you a link to get your ticket. So okay. At Piper the Comedian, all one word. If you're in the DFW area, man, come check out Piper. Funny dude. Oh man, you're gonna have a wonderful time. Not trying to toot my horn, doo doo, but hey. And if you've never mm. been to a comedy show. If you've never been, because I know some people out there that have never been to comedy shows. Yes, you'd be amazed. You got to go to a comedy show at a comedy, comedy club. club. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That's the best experience. If you go into a bar, you go into a lounge, <laughs> you won't right. get the same experience. Um, you got to go see. Live performances are the best. And I'm going to tell y'all why. Because anything that happens in that room is never going to happen again. The only the people who are in that room is going to experience that experience and have that, that experience. So happened. that's right. So make sure right. you go check out um, my boy Piper at the Improv November twenty second. If you're in the DFW area, come check him out, man. Oh yeah, I appreciate the plug, brother. Yes, this sir. the end of this. We ended up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, we have the stuff to talk about. That's fine. I'm good, man. I uh, I got to pass for another thirty minutes. You know? Okay. Uh, how right. we want to do? I got I got another somebody. Somebody. Somebody else. Um, oh, you got another? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, but um, man, Piper, we got we got to connect, man. Yeah, we do, brother. Um, so you say you're not doing comedy no more? You just I'm done, man. I'm done. I'm I'm tired of the road. That the road was just you know, it's a lot of people that wish they was on the road. I know. Wish that and they can you know before before I um was actually getting into the comedy. That's that's all I wanted is to get on the road. And now you got it. Now it's like. I think you know what it was. I think if I, you know, I had to do like the the chitlin circuit a little bit to kind of get my name there. out yeah. there, mm-hmm. and I think that kind of like really just wore me down. And I was like, uh, I was like thirty five at the time, and I'm like, I'm too grown to be <laughs> staying at this Holiday Inn, this yeah, Motel right. Six. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, like. Yeah. I got real responsibilities at home. Like yeah, they wasn't paying a, a whole bunch of money. Nah. Just, just just on the road doing shows. So I get it, it makes sense. So you have to do what's best for you. And I'm just like, I got a little girl now. You know what I mean? Little How baby girl. girl. She three, man. That's good, She's bro. She three. I man. got a daughter. How? I just got custody, my daughter. Really? I just got custody. Man. Yeah, She's 27, but hey, I just got her. <laughs> you know, that's my girl. <laughs> yeah, man. Them girls are something special, though, dog. Yeah, them girls are yeah. special. So cherish it, bro. Enjoy it. Yeah. And know that they grow up very fast. So make memories, man. Three years old. That's, that's beautiful. Congratulations, yeah, man. man. That's a good thing. I don't want to miss that time, man. I don't want to miss that time. You so know you, what I mean? Because this, this, this not, I mean, tell you my public business. <laughs> but, um, I got a set of twins too with another chick in California. Boys, girls, girls. How old are they? They're twelve. Yeah, they twelve. They about to be thirteen. I'm a twin. Really? Fraternal. Yeah. What? Not identical. Yeah. It's another Piper. Really? Yes, sir. Damn. Yeah. So you just never know. Yeah. yeah. My twin. my my girls are fraternal too. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. Looking at them look alike. Yeah. Nope. They fraternal. But it's like. I'm I'm mad or upset that I didn't get to be in the house with them. Where they at? They in California. In Cal, okay. Yeah. They, you know, they, I, 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 and, and I'm gonna hop on this and, and and we can get out of here. What you said make a lot of sense because I think, from my personal experience and me just knowing being a father, it's very important. And that's one good thing I could say came out of my ex, you know, out of my past marriage that I was there with. My daughter, mm. my only child, I don't have any other kids. Mm. And it's very important that dad is in that home. Whether it's the son or the daughter, but something about that girl, you know, she grab on to you, daddy's girl, you know, and yeah. you made a lot of sense when you say, I just wish you was there. Because you being there in that home versus picking up on the weekends and the custody and getting on this, it's two different, it's apples and oranges, bro. Yeah. It, it's nothing like you being there. She's jumping on your chest in the morning, taking her to school, picking her up. Yeah. And you cooking dinner, breakfast, and you there. Nothing can replace that. And that's the most important thing I think kids need. Not just girls, but kids need that father there. Yeah. But things happen, and, you know, people do what they do, and that's why you got to be careful who you marrying, who you having kids by, because they can be 
using the kids at the pond and you know, and that's why I said when I was single that I never date women with little kids. You know, I got to deal with the baby daddy. He looking at me crazy. Because when you meet a girl, a, a lady, somebody wasn't done with somebody. Meaning he broke up with her and she didn't think so or vice versa. Mm. So I didn't never want to get myself in that entanglement, mm. you know, and get myself <laughs> in that situation to where I got to deal with this dude because he mad. Because I'm there for one, mm-hmm. and then I'm there with his son, his daughter, and she, he called in the three of them. I want to see my son. I'm see, and it, why even sign up for that? Yeah. So I bowed. We'll never just get into that type of mix because there's nothing like that daddy being there with that son. Yeah. So be careful, people out there. If you're having kids, make sure you with the, that you tr- try your best to know your partner and try your best to know if that person gonna be a good parent or you know because it's, it's it's bad when you have to split up. Yeah, and I know the feeling. You know the feeling that you can't be there. Only, I mean, what can you do? Especially they, and your baby living way in California, so yeah. I'm sure it's hard. I just wish my baby mama would have listened to Tony Rock. That's a whole another story, but <laughs> okay. Since we, whole another story. Since we getting into it, but <laughs> I, I we ain't get got it. time for that. Story, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Listen, <laughs> yeah. So, but you, I'm sure you're close with them. Your babies, not as much as I want as to, man. Should, yeah. Not as much as I want to. Twelve years old, man. They, yeah, they, 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 they young little teenagers coming up, bro. They'll you be know. thirteen in December, man. December what? December third. My birthday, December fourth. Really? They good babies, aren't they? Yeah, some real good babies. They are. December fourth. Yeah. Yeah, man. Sagittarius in the building. Shout out all my Sag in the building. Yeah, that's good, man. But I really enjoyed you, brother. I, I, Same here, real man. Real dope. Uh, you know, thank you got going this podcast production, man. Y'all got to look, all y'all comedians, entertainers, y'all gotta come check this brother out, man. He doing his thing. Um, I'm booked and busy. I got shows everywhere, man. And, you know, follow me on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and um at Piper the Comedian. And I can't say it enough, brother. I appreciate you for having me. I absolutely. was at home doing absolutely nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> so you really interrupt my nothingness. And yeah. <laughs> man, it's been a long time coming, man. I've been trying to orchestrate this for yes, a minute, man. But the so. schedules wasn't lining up. Yeah, but I finally so. told you, hey, and I enjoy being home on, on the weekends, not doing nothing. Yeah. Man, being with the family, <laughs> yeah. hanging out. Because we carving pumpkins today. And we doing, I'm, I'm showing off my little piece of oven outside on my patio. So I'm in, you know, I'm just enjoying this. And as a comedian, I just love just when I don't have no shows. As silly as that may sound, yeah, I just yeah. like the, the you know the break. You know, yeah. just the idea. I'm just at home. I don't have nowhere to be. Yeah. I am just <laughs> loving this. No obligation. No obligation. But hey, I thought not to come today, but I said, no, nah, I'm gonna come on in. That's what's so up. We appreciate it. Yeah, man. man. This is a beautiful thing. Tap in podcast, man. Y'all stay tuned. Y'all always, you know, follow this brother, man. This brother doing good things, having good topics, and I just enjoyed it, brother. I Appreciate really, it, man. Really did, man. Appreciate so, it. Have me back, man. We'll, Absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll chop it up, man. Absolutely, 100%, so. man. Yo, y'all, thank y'all for tapping in, man. This has been the Tap In Podcast. Holla.